It's hammer time. I told you, homeboys, you can't touch us. Can't touch us. Hammer time? No. It's budget time. <laughs> I got my budget here for March. And we're going to talk about money. Money's on everybody's mind right now. Prices are going crazy. You know, you can't touch us, homeboy. <laughs> It's budget time. It's not hammer time. It's budget time, okay? Right on, homeboy. Okay, homegirls. Okay, I did make you coffee, so here you go. Yeah. Um, this is maple pecan um, ground coffee I got at Walmart. Uh, Starbucks brand. Cheers. It's really good. Well, I cannot believe that somebody asked me a question today. And I found it from yesterday's video. If you didn't see yesterday's videos about living rent free um, or mortgage free, so I'll put it at the end of this video. So don't go now and look at it, but I'll put this at the end of the video at this one so that I'll link it so you can go ahead and go watch that. Um, but Marty Evans asked, and she said, home insurance is skyrocketing, is it? Yeah. <clears throat> but reportedly so is car insurance and all vehicle related expenses would you be willing to once again do a breakdown of current monthly expenses even though you did it not too long ago oh my goodness i can really i was kind of surprised because um i had everything all ready to go this is what i was going to do today it's about um your budget and keeping your expenses down living the nomad life and i'm telling you what there are a lot of people talking about money, screaming about money. Everything has gone skyrocketed over the past, excuse me, uh, coffees, coffee burps, okay? Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, at, over the past three, four years, things went nuts, didn't they? I mean, gas prices, food prices. They said, I saw this one article uh, that... Um, related that in just three years things have most things have skyrocketed 20 to 25 percent that they said normally would take 11 to 12 years for it to go up like that but just in three years we had this going on oh my goodness yeah um you know we all just need to chill <laughs> we gotta chill because of these prices so i'm gonna talk about this now my purpose is to teach y'all how to live in your vehicle. I have a book out, it's on Amazon, <clears throat> and it's called How to Live in a Minivan, The Minivan Leeway. And um, just go on Amazon and type on type in Minivan Lee and I will come up. And it's not expensive, and it's, it is the most comprehensive and organizational book for the nomad life and beyond. And it's not just for minivans, it's for SUVs, um, all kinds of vans, all kinds of vehicles, <laughs> even sedans. I'm still dealing with a little bit of phlegm and a little bit of a cough, so bear with me on this. Um, my throat's just a little bit more scratchy, but I feel fine. I mean, I, I'm fine. Um, no fever, no th nothing like that, just a little bit of a um, <clears throat> cough and some phlegm going on. It feels like it's gonna be like by tomorrow. And that's the way my grandson was. He just didn't feel good one day. Next day, he kind of was okay. And then he was fine after that. So I like to teach people how to live in a minivan like I do, which I have done for seven years. I started this lifestyle because I wanted to do it. It just seemed so fun. It's a small space. It's, it's decorated nice. Um, I've got my pet um, flower, mellow yellow, right here. Let me introduce you. <laughs> it's really the only decoration I had. That's why I kind of like feature it. My yellow flower. Um, <clears throat> and I think it does go well with the turquoise, don't you think? And the purple? Come on now. It kind of sticks out there, doesn't it? But what I try to do is decorate my little home, um, my wonderful home, my little pod, my clubhouse. 
<laughs> and I like to um, splash color all over and put color everywhere. And that way, um, unless this, I got this over here because it doesn't bother me right here. If it was over here, it would bother me. It'd be in my way. Right here, it's not in my way. I found that this is the only true place that I can put something that has no purpose whatsoever except to be pretty. So you just stay here and be pretty, okay? Okay? <laughs> my pet flower. <clears throat> you say, what? No, it's not hammer time. It's budget time. Shh, budget time. We're talking about money here. But I like to teach people how to do this. I wanted to do this. But now I find myself, with the prices going sky high, I don't think I could afford to live in a house again or, or rent an apartment. They're just too expensive. And so if you go to yesterday's video, I talk about that. And I talk about what the average is in the country, in America, that is. And a lot of women don't have great social security my age. So, and some of the women are recently maybe widowed or the males are widowed and they just don't want to balance it out anymore. So what they want to do is just make their life more simple, live a more cheap life in a more um, active life. Because I talk about that in the video. So go to yesterday's video, okay? And I'll talk more about that. But this is what I like to do. I like to help people uh, find a different way to live. A more cheap way. A more exciting way. A more interesting way to live. It's a little bit non-traditional. But hey, you know, I, you know, I, um, do you want to be the needle in the haystack? Or do you just want to be the haystack? I like being a needle in the haystack. I like being um, unique. And just a little bit different. Um, Non-traditional, just just dare to be different, right? Okay, so my last budget that I put out, and I made a video about it, was at the end of February. And I said, and I told y'all that I was going to keep track of everything throughout. I was going to break it down a little bit better throughout um, March. Okay? So what I did was my budget I put at $800. I know that seems really low, but you know there's a there are people out here out here in the world who really don't bring in maybe 7 $800 and that's all in their social security. You know a lot of women um were home taking um, of my age group we were home um uh keeping keeping the home fires going, taking care of the little ones, right? And, and the men were out working. Well, now we find ourselves without much social security because maybe there was a divorce or, you know, um, yeah, they're just not getting as much as they would have um, had it been um, maybe in, in days that are now. You know, women were more apt to work and didn't just um, stay home with the kids, which I don't know, you know, it's good and bad, right? I mean, it's good that the kids were taken care of, right? Um, so. I had $800. Now, food I had at $200. And essentials, which are anything non-food, but things that you're going to buy over, you know, monthly or weekly, I put that at $40. That was probably pretty low, but I was going to really go for it, you know? Now, as far as the car goes, my insurance has not gone up. It's at $97. I probably should probably even get cheaper um, and look for it, but I'm, I'm, I'm too lazy to do it, it seems. Um, and I have full coverage. Now, the car wash at 12 a month, and then fuel, I think I have down here for 120, which is a little low, but I will mention on my new budget um, for um, for fuel, I did, a, so far I've done 110. That's it. I mean, that's pretty low for the gas prices, but I'll talk about that when I get to this, of why it is that way. Now, laundry at 40. Storage, I had 63, but guess what? Just this month, my storage went up to 78, I think, 78, 79. And uh, yeah, it went up. But when I, when I, if, if, if I go to Flagstaff this summer, it's going to be double that. My phone is at 76. That doesn't change. Uh, restaurant food, I like to go out to breakfast here and there. I like to go a couple times a month, a couple times a week. I only had it at 40. That's really low. And then I do have a couple subscriptions, Apple subscriptions, because I have iPhones, and I've got that down at $20. Okay. 
And then I had just play money at $100. So there you go. So what have I spent? Let's, let's look at this. I have spent, I put down for 200, I've spent 180. Now what I did was $100 was produce. I wanted to break down to see what I was spending in produce and it's approximately, I think it was like $97 for produce because I like to do the apples, I like to do avocados, and I, I like to, yeah, and get lettuce, yeah, I mean, exhibit A. <laughs> yeah, exhibit A, okay. What is that, the apple? Okay, so, um, yeah, $100 for produce. I had no idea that I was buying that much produce. Onions, uh, lettuce, and I guess it's, it's going up in price. So there you go. And then uh, probably the rest of it, another $100 or $80 was basically like chicken. I kind of cut back on the cheese. Um, I'm just kind of tired of, of eating so much cheese. Once cheese gets in here. I mean, it's like, um, I can't stop eating it. I have low tolerance of staying away, low resistance, I guess I should say, of cheese. I love it. So the essentials were like paper towels, shampoo, and vitamins. And I put down 40, but I so far I've spent 60. Okay. Now, car insurance is 97 like I said. Every month is 97 $12, I do go a couple times a month, wash my van, and it's 12 Fuel, I only spend 110 Now, how do I do that? I mean, how do I only spend $110? I probably spend less than some of you living in the city, okay? If you're new to me here, I do not boondock. I haven't been boondocking this year at all. And there's not much boondocking around Tucson, Arizona. So I do like city life. I know Tucson very well. I know where I can park at night. I've got my favorite spots. And I know the city very well. I can navigate it. And I know it's available. So what I do is this season, this year, I kind of picked a little bit different area to be in. But I, I select all of my needs around... I select all of my needs around um, the area that I, that I like to be in. And so I look for like a laundromat close by, a car wash close by, a Walmart close by. What else? Um, things that I need. I have, I have my senior center close by that I can eat lunch. Um, so, you know, I've got all of those needs right in one area so I don't have to travel that far. My favorite restaurant is close by. My Planet Fitness, there's a few Planet Fitnesses in Tucson. I picked one that was close to my area that I wanted to be in this year. So, here's another thing. One of the reasons I like to be in a city is I don't really like to travel too much anymore. I pick a city and I kind of spend the season there. And I pick Tucson in the winter because a lot of snowbirds come here. And it's, it's good weather. So it makes sense to me. Why do I want to travel? Because even like um, my letter said, gas prices going up. Minivans prices are going up. Repairs are going up, okay? Well, this is my home and I need this. So budget-wise, it'd be crazy to be traveling so much right now. I, a lot of my friends aren't traveling that much anymore. They're really not, not like they were, you know, going to see this, this, um, uh, national park and this national park. They're not doing it any, anymore because it's just the prices. I mean, to replace your van, I know what that's like. That's a hassle because I did have to replace my last van with this one. And that was quite the feat, I must say, and the expense. And then repairs are out, out of this world. So I don't like to put wear and tear on my minivan. I'm, am I a nomad? Oh, you bet I am. I've had people say, well, you're not even, you're a fake nomad. Well, I never. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> How insulting. Oh, my gosh. 
No, I'm a nomad, okay? So knock it off, anybody who thinks that. I live in my minivan. Oh, and then if somebody accused me, oh, you don't really live in your minivan. You, you're living in a senior center or something. I think they, they, they thought maybe because I was, um, went, uh, because I belonged to a senior center that I was living there in some, yeah, it was like this housing or something. No, <laughs> no, wrong. Um, no, I live in my minivan. Anybody that knows me knows I live in my minivan. Um, and uh, I do have a storage, which I will continue on with this. Let me finish out the um, the car expense. My um, my total, I said eight hundred. My total uh, so far is nine hundred twenty eight dollars. So I did go over. But listen to this. Remember, I had to get my hatch door fixed. That was one hundred sixty some dollars, right? So that was that was not expected. I had to fix it. It was the actuator in my hatch door. Necessary to be fixed. Otherwise, how am I going to shut my door? So, so I wait, I went over $128, but I overspent on the $160 for the repair of the hatch door. So really, I, I came, I had, I think it's like $60. Yeah. $40, sorry. Okay. Onward. Laundry, I spent $38. Storage was $78. My phone, 76. Restaurants, I spent 68. I went a little over on that. Apple subscriptions was 22. And my gym was 27. Yeah, that's what I spent. It all came to $928. Okay? I mean, so if you have a decent... If you have a decent pension and um, uh, Social Security, you're going to do just fine. Just... And I allowed for going to restaurants and I allowed for that stuff, you know, um, I didn't uh, purchase anything big, you know, I didn't like buy a new phone or didn't uh, make a large purchase, but that's what I spent. And I kept my expenses down the best I could. Another thing also is I did go to Ohio. I just got back. So for six days I was gone. Two of them were flying and then four of them were at my daughter's. And, and she was feeding me, so um, I wasn't uh, spending money on um, gas or food at that time. Now, I did, listen to this, I did go and get a, um, a hotel room. And, you know, I did that as soon as I got back. But listen to this. I use Expedia, and I put in that they were watching my flight expense with American Airlines they found they that and when it all was said and done they actually found a better price during all that time that's how Expedia works and the, and they actually refunded me $95 that's one of the reasons I went and got the hotel room so that that isn't even any expense that I had to to deal with yeah and I waited for them and they did put it finally they refunded it to me and held it and so I, they, I put that towards a hotel room. You know, you can find little ways, you know, to save money and uh, yeah. So I'm real happy with Expedia. I tried Travelocity, but it seemed like when I was comparing them, it seemed like there's, were giving me higher prices. So I do like Expedia. So that's my budget. You know, it's really concerning for me that I'm watching this nation struggle so I don't know how families are doing it with children because how are you going to live in a van with a bunch of children you'd have to have a large schoolie and those aren't cheap you'd have to do major construction build out yeah they're they're not cheap and the gas on it is yeah and the insurance on it oh dear yeah you have to actually get RV insurance for it it's not always easy yeah so I have not noticed, I mean, my, my car insurance hasn't gone up. I have not looked to see what minivans are, you know, but um, uh, while I talk to you, I'm going to do this real quick and uh, go on um, Craigslist. Tucson. Let me look at this. Craigslist Tucson. And we'll see. I'm just looking at minivans. I'm looking at a Kia Sedona 2015. 
which is one year newer than mine. And they want $9,000. So, no, um, a cash. And I would pay cash, $9,000. And it has a hundred and um, hundred and nine thousand dollars or miles a <laughs> hundred nine thousand miles which you know isn't that bad I think I bought mine at 95 it's in excellent condition yeah okay so it's in really good condition it's in Rio Rico Arizona okay so no I don't see a huge jump I get privately owned. I pay cash for whatever, my, any vehicle. I do not get payments. So there you go. Let me see one more. Let's look, let's, one more. Let's see what we got here. Some of these have high miles on it. I don't, I wouldn't want to go high miles. Mm-mm. Oh, here's a 2010. Oh my gosh, Chrysler Town and Country. Only 72,000 miles. What is this? 8,500. Hello? And it's white. Oh my gosh. Gosh. I might go buy it. <laughs> yeah. Um, like new. It's like new. Yeah. The title status is rebuilt. I don't know that. What does that mean? Let me know down below. What does that mean? It's rebuilt. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Well, I could read about this. It's very interesting. So wherever you are, go on Craigslist and look. I'll bet if you're going to go with a um, used car lot, yeah, they're going to be a little bit more expensive. I don't go that route. You know? I drive it, I look at it, I drive it, and I let um, I let him decide. He usually leads me to what I need. Maybe he's led me to this one. He said, go ahead and look, right? No, I like my minivan. It's still running very good, so. Okay, everybody, this is my budget, and uh, start keeping track. Here's what I want you to do. Here's your best bet, is um, my apple. This is a heavy apple, actually. Is get a notebook get a paper and pencil actually get a notebook and every time you spend something write it down that's what you have to do put it in a category make some categories and write down everything you spend or get a money app on your phone and categorize everything that way you have to know you have to do what I did you have to write down everything you spend and then you can see where your money is going and see if there's any way to cut back um, and there you go there's my advice for you, okay? Okay, I will see you tomorrow. I'll have another really good subject for you. Yeah, we might want to talk about um, money for a while. And um, I think we're coming up to a season here where you might want to get going. I know a lot of my friends that are online and are, are getting their vehicles ready to go. They want to get going, yeah. Okay, so go on minivanlead.com. Please check your subscription. Make sure you're subscribed. If you're not, hit the button and uh, get the book on Amazon. How to live in a minivan, the minivan leeway. Till tomorrow, everybody. I love you guys. Bye.